Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guide. Today on the DCC Guide, I had promised that we would finish the installation of the uh, push rods and, and knobs and everything for controlling the Blue Point uh, switch machines. However, my luck with Walther's ran out and the actual push rods were out of stock. So I scurried around a couple of days ago and I managed to find some in stock at Tony's Trains. And uh, kudos to Tony's Trains, you know, if you need something, call those guys. Uh, but at any rate, I managed to get a set of push rods ordered from them and I'm expecting them sometime uh, this week. I'm gonna have to push this back uh, another week in order to wait for those push rods to come in. But by then, everything else should be here uh, and we should be able to proceed with uh, installing those uh, push rods for the Blue Point controllers. Now, what I'm going to do today then is we're going to start working on building the yard ladder down into the freight or goods yard, depending on which country you're in. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with uh, setting up the, uh, the ladder uh, down into the yard. Uh, but first, before we do, I want to remind you about one thing. Uh, the demonstration that I was doing the other day with cutting the, uh, cutting the throw wires uh, uh, from these uh, blue point switch machines uh, where the uh, pliers broke right in front of the camera. And, you know, that's the best example of why you need to wear your, your safety goggles. Uh, over your glasses or without them, okay? Because you never know when something like that is going to happen. And a piece of, uh, a, piece of a pair of pliers or a piece of wire is going to shoot up and hit you in the eye. And, uh, you know, once again, as Ben Franklin always said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And you don't want to get up, end up at the emergency room in the middle of the night because you've got a piece of wire embedded in your eye because you didn't wear your safety goggles. Okay, let's go ahead and get started now with wiring up uh, or with working our way down the ladder. And for that, I'm going to bring you in here close and we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I've done because I've gone ahead and I, I needed to glue in, uh, glue down some of the uh, roadbed to head down the ladder. And I'll explain to you what I've done and why I've done it as we go along. Okay, so let's move in here. So what I want to do today though is look at uh, the transition from the roadbed here down into the yard. Because, you know, I, I mentioned that for wiring in the yard, I was going to be laying uh, the turnouts and truck directly on the green uh, foam. However, what I decided I'm really actually going to do is put uh, some of this thin cork sheeting that I showed you previously uh, down as the roadbed. So it's not going to be completely uh, uh, down on the cork, it, on the foam itself. It's still going to have a very thin layer of cork uh, here on the roadbed. And, you know, you can find that at a number of different places uh, in England. I think I, I saw it on Hatton's, I believe, where you could get rolls of cork and sheet cork. So it's readily available over there. Uh, another thing I want to, uh, to apologize to my UK viewers because in the video I did on the Blue Point controllers, I did give folks, uh, in the US anyway, uh, a number of options as to where they could purchase those Blue Point controllers. Um, I also had, had included information in the video about uh, where it could be uh, acquired, where they could be acquired in the UK. But unfortunately, somewhere along the line, they got snipped out during the editing. But what I found is, though, that Coastal DCC in the UK can uh, special order those Blue uh, Point controllers for you. Uh, NG Trains uh, uh, has them. Uh, Mech Models also sells them. And um, I found an occasional reference on uh, eBay where you could purchase them. So those are just, you know, uh, three or uh, four possible sources in the UK for you. There might be other uh, sources in mainland Europe 
where you could get them. And of course, you can always order them from uh, companies in the U.S., like uh, Micromark uh, in the U.S., as well as any Walther's dealer, or you can order them directly off of the Walther's web website uh, when they have them in stock, okay? Uh, can't guarantee that all the time, obviously. But those are options for you, you know, they are available. Plus, there are some UK designs that perform a similar function to the uh, Bluepoint turnout controllers. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these pins out that I have uh, holding the uh, cork in place. I went ahead and glued this down because it, I really wanted it to be good and firm in here because what I'm going to be doing is uh, a pretty aggressive work on these. Okay. So basically then, I went ahead and installed the cork uh, running uh, down from the main uh, track here. And, you know, it, in the UK, you commonly see uh, yards like this, and in the US as well, uh, you commonly see yards almost at, um, uh, at ground level, okay? They're not raised up on elevated ballast road beds like you see out on the main lines. But, uh, so I wanted to replicate that. And I do this on the Piedmont Southern as well. You know, I use these uh, uh, ramps that I'm gonna show you how I do to go from my main line to sidings and spurs for industries, particularly going out to my pulp tracks, that kind of thing. It makes a nice transition. Okay, so I got this all glued down here. And basically I just took standard, you know, the cork road bed I use and, you know, splayed it out a bit and put a, an insert here and a long insert in here in order to give this nice flared design. So what you want to do, this here is a Stanley Sureform tool, S-U-R-F-O-R-M, and it is uh, designed for um, basically the work of a plane, but it's a very aggressive cutter here. And what you do is, once this is glued down, you can start cutting down here and it will really bring this down fast. And, you know, it's several inches long, so it's gonna give you a nice gradient. So it's just a matter of sitting here doing this over and over again until you get it down to the thickness you want. And I'm gonna start way back here because I want it to be a gradual change in elevation as we're going down the ramp. You can see we're getting down quite a bit there and pulling a lot of cork out of here. Okay, I'm going to get my vacuum cleaner out and uh, clean this up and then afterwards I'll be back and we'll see how close I am. Okay, so here's a piece of cork, and as you can see, we're getting close, but still need to get down a little bit closer. So let's do some more. Okay, let me clean that up and we'll do another check. Okay, so you can see we've gotten it down very close now. Um, I'm within probably a 32nd of an inch on that one. So let's go ahead and do it some more. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it down to the same level as the cork. So now it's going to look like this with the uh, turnout coming off of the main. And then we'll have this one here, like so, feeding out into the actual yard, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is um, I need to go ahead and get this piece in and then we will extend uh, the cork all the way throughout the yard here and get that uh, down at least to the level of the turnouts. So let me pull uh, things out of the way over here on the left and get that set up so we can add the cork 
running down uh, on the rest of the ladder. Okay, so I've got a piece of cork set down here where I want it to uh, transition out into the yard itself. So I want to go ahead and make a mark here um, for that location here. So this is going to be a fairly wide transition piece and then we'll have a piece going this way and another one continuing down. That looks correct. Okay, so I'm going to cut here, cut here roughly, and then along a line of about here. That should give me a good track. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull that out and do some cutting. Okay, there. And we're going to cut to here. And from there to here. Okay. So let's see how that's going to work. Okay, so that'll give us a little bit of relief um, and allow us to get these turnouts up out of the mud, but they're going to be down uh, almost at yard level. So let's go ahead and um, we'll run some more of these because I want to go ahead and add the turnout down here for the uh, cattle pen. Well, um, as fate would have it, uh, the battery on my uh, wireless microphone ran out right as I finished uh, doing this work here. So um, I went ahead and put it on charge and proceeded to go ahead and cut out some more sections of cork and laid them out here. And I extended the, uh, uh, extended the, the track ladder all the way down to the very end where the, the three turnouts are going to be located. And I've got those in place. And uh, since I showed you previously how I modify my electrofrog turnouts, I went ahead and uh, made the uh, modifications to the rest of those, these three here. And so they're ready to be installed. So basically we're at the point now where I've got all of the cork laid out uh, uh, and cut for you know most of the rest of the yard here. So what I need to do now is pull all this off of here and go ahead and glue these down. Um, oh, excuse me, that one's upside down. But let me point out a couple of things that I've already done here. <clears throat> okay, so here I've made a location marker for where the under the track permanent magnet is going to be on this track. I've got one down here, which you probably can't see, it's off camera, and I've got one right here. And the way I, I decided on those positions was I just took a locomotive and put it here on the uh, uh, on the leg of the uh, turnout, uh, where it would be uh, at least one length, locomotive length of straight track, so that we could do that, uh, we can do the, the magnetic uncoupling without any problems at all. Now I probably could have come back a little bit further to the frog, but I really wanted it off of the turnout before I put that magnet in, okay? And um, in this section of track, you know, it's going to be Oh, um, probably close to 30 inches long. So we're talking about room to stash um, in double O uh, UK type cars. We're looking at about nine of them with uh, HO uh, 40 foot box cars. Something on the order of five or six cars would fit on this track here. So a small switcher can handle that. And that's that's a nice uh, area to uh, to be able to work with. Now. And I did the same thing down here on this track and at further down. So let me get that guy out of the way. So as I say, I've already pre-marked the cork here for where I'm going to put the magnets. I've got a center line drawn on this one, center line on these. I haven't put a center line up here yet, but we'll get to that. Um, I've also gone ahead and marked the locations for the frog feeders and the locations for the um, or where the wires are going to come up from the Blue Point 
controllers. Oh, and by the way, I got most of the stuff came in uh, for uh, installing the Bluepoint controllers, except for the push rods. And I got an email today from Tony's Trains saying that the uh, push rods were being shipped. So, you know, hopefully by the weekend that will all be here. So next week sometime we'll get around to installing those push rods. Everything just about is uh, coming together on that one. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pull all three of these turnouts off of the uh, off of the, the ladder, and we'll go ahead and glue down the uh, cork uh, for this section of the of the yard, and get ready to go because uh, you know after this, I mainly have the extension out here to the cattle pen, and also of course up here on this upper track, the extension out to the coal dealer and the uh, and the gas works out there, but we can add those in later. Mainly what I want to do though is, con is, is concentrate on getting this area of the yard done so that we can concentrate on adding the flex track sections in here. And you'll notice I'm using a piece of flex track right here. Now, let me point out, I don't use set track. And set track are, are pieces of track that you can get from Atlas and other companies that come in specific uh, lengths, nine inches, something on that order, and also uh, they might come in curves that are a preset curvature. I prefer using uh, pieces of, you know, three foot long flex track because I can cut them to any length that I need and I can curve them to any curvature that I need by just bending them, okay? And then you can straighten it out quite easily. That gets it straight real fast. So it's easy to work with, uh, simple to cut, and I think... Um, for, for someone who is following a track plan in like an Atlas track plan book or some of the others that are based on set track, that definitely is the way to go. But we'll get into that in another video as far as some of the other uh, aspects of, of using flex track. But what I want to do today, like I said, go ahead, get these glued down, get everything uh, set back up again, and then we can install the uh, uh, turnouts for the yard ladder and uh, be ready to go when it comes to installing the uh, uh, the turnout, the blue point uh, controllers for these three turnouts as well. So let me get the glue out and we'll get moving. So as you can see, I took my green uh, Sharpie and I outlined the position of the cork here um, on the green foam so that uh, we can stay fairly comfortably within the margins as we apply the uh, liquid nails for projects that I use for this. So let me go ahead and we'll lay a line on here and get started with adding the cork. rid of the excess here. Okay, so now we've got the uh, now we've got the adhesive ready. So I'm going to reach in here and start working it down. You want to try to get out to the edges of the green line or the uh, where the foam is or where the cork is going to be laid so that you get a good solid layer of adhesion there.
Okay, that looks like it's going to do it. Looks like I need to get some new putty knives. That one's getting kind of grungy. Okay, so now let's go ahead and reset the cork where it needs to be. Right there. And get my roller so we can get it down. Okay, now let me put this one in. Okay, and then this one. And as I said, you know, I, uh, I've seen this cork sheeting like this advertised on the Hatton's website in the UK. And of course, I got this, I think I might have ordered it off of Amazon, or I picked it up at, in an office supply store like Staples or Office uh, Depot or something like that. So um, it's, it's fairly uh, available, not a, not a big issue to find it. And once you get it down, just leave it alone and let it sit up. There we go. Okay, we got a couple of more pieces here to go down. This is for the uh, track going out to the cattle pen. Okay, and we're going to square that off. Right there. Okay, so the next thing, I've got to let this uh, adhesive set up, and that'll take a couple of hours. Okay, so the uh, cement has now had a chance to set up. So what I want to do is show you how uh, to install the under the track magnets in a situation like this because you know on the previous installation we did we had the full thickness of the uh, uh, of the roadbed uh, in which we could install the uh, magnet itself however in this case it has to go down into the foam because it's much thicker than the roadbed itself so what I'm going to do is I really I've marked on the on the uh, cork where to cut but I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the cut through the cork. Okay, so we can, uh, we'll have a space in which to insert the magnet there. Go ahead and get this out of the way here. Okay, there. So now we'll have a place between the, uh, in the cork here where we can insert the magnet. So the next step, and I also, you know, it's gonna fit within the lines of the green here. So what I'm gonna do is cut all the way down to the plywood. Now, if you do not use foam or any other kind of sub road bed or scenery base like this, then you're going to, and you want to use these under the track magnets, then, uh, you know, you're going to have to cut down into your plywood base, just like I'm doing with the foam here, in order to make a uh, spot where the magnet can rest. Okay, so now let's see, we'll get this cut out here like so. Okay, and now let's see if we can pop it out of here. 
get a little leverage going on. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so that clears it out. Let me get some of this extra foam out of the way. Okay. And we'll see, is that going to drop in there? Yes. But that's a bit too deep. So what we have to do is come up with some way of uh, creating a platform that the magnet itself can sit on. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and just take and mark. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and take uh, this long knife blade and cut into the, uh, the foam, okay, on all sides, so that we're basically creating a mark for where we can cut through here. Like that, and we'll do this one here. Okay, hopefully at that point I can now just go ahead and slice through the foam, like so, catch it on each end. That gives me a plug that I can insert in here, like so, and creates a platform for the magnet, but it's still just a bit shy. So what I'm going to do is take that piece of cork that I cut out a minute ago, slip that in there, and now it's at the perfect height. So very simple, easy to do, just requires a couple of minutes here, as you've seen, uh, with a uh, couple of knives, and um, that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this in place with my adhesive, and uh, then I'll go ahead and do the other uh, magnets that need to be installed, and we'll be ready to go on Monday with working with some, uh, some of the flex track here in the yard. And um, after that, um, I'm pretty sure that by uh, next Friday, a week from today, we will be able to go ahead and finish installing the Blue Point controllers uh, with their push rods and knobs and everything uh, uh, for that. One thing I do have to do before that, though, I have to get a fascia installed here on the front of the layout. And um, I, that, that's mainly because the control mechanism uses these little uh, knobs for the uh, push-pull mechanism. So those get installed on the face of the, la of the layout, um, on the fascia, and then you just use those to push and pull, okay? So I need to get a fascia installed on the layout before we can complete uh, that part of the job. So um, I've got a lot of stuff to do in, in the interim, and hopefully um, we can, I can show you some of that on Monday. Uh, we'll get the uh, track finished here, we'll get the turnouts laid for the ladder, we will, uh, you know, start working with pieces of flex track and installing that here uh, on the uh, cork that we've laid down. And I'll go ahead and uh, show you the uh, the fascia because that, you know, that's a very fairly simple thing to do. Uh, just a few screws and uh, pop it in place, and then we'll be ready for uh, going ahead with uh, finishing the uh, control mechanisms for the uh, Blue Point switch machines a week from today. So. Um, got a lot coming in the next week, and uh, stick with me and uh, keep watching those videos. Well, that's a wrap for today. Uh, I hope that gets you started on, on any work that you're doing in your goods yard or your freight yard. As we proceed f with uh, more work down here in the goods yard, I'll be uh, working with FlexTrack. And a lot of people ask me about FlexTrack. So I do want to go ahead and address some of the questions that came up about using FlexTrack and laying FlexTrack and working with it in general. So we will be getting to that as work progresses, so just bear with me. Uh, we got a lot of things to wrap up. There's still a long way to go before this layout is complete and ready to operate. Uh, until then, um, keep coming back for more videos. Have a good weekend and uh, stay safe out there. And we'll see you here on Monday with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.